<clears throat> if a box has length, width, and height x, y, and z, respectively, and volume x times y times z forced to be 27, then the surface area of that box is a function of only two of the three variables. You can eliminate one of those three variables through this constraint equation. <clears throat> That's a constraint on the relative sizes of the length, width, and height. Right? There's some relationship between the length, width, and height. That, a constraint. So uh, the surface area is two times the uh, area of the bottom, right? The area of the bottom plus the area of the top, plus two times the area of the left side. That's the uh, left side plus the right side, the area of the left side plus the area of the right side. And then, of course, the uh, area of the front and the back. And then I replace z with 27 over x times y. And then there's some canceling. There's x's and x's. I cancel those because I'm not going to allow x to be 0. I'm not going to accept any solutions to um, a system of equations that I'm going to construct later where in x or y is 0 because I want to actually have a box, not, a, uh, not something with a length, width, or height, 0. So um, I cancel the x's, and that leaves me with this expression. xy plus 27 over y plus 27 over x. And I'm going to ignore that, too, actually, uh, because when you think about it, um, right. this function achieves its maximum at a solution to the gradient of a is equal to the vector 0, 0. Now, I could take the factor of 2 that I would have in the gradient of a there, and I could divide both sides by 2 and just get rid of it. Okay, so this uh, equation, gradient of a is equal to 0, is this equivalent to this pair of equations. First one. The derivative with respect to x of that expression uh, will give me a y from that term. That term will die because I'm taking the derivative with respect to x, and then I'll have a negative 27 over x squared from that term. And then similarly, I'll have with the derivative with respect to y will give me an x from that term, a negative 27 over y squared from that, and nothing from that. Okay, so <clears throat> set both those equal to zero. This is a system of equations similar to something I presented in lecture. And let me rearrange those two things. Now, y is 27 over x squared. And then x is 27 over y squared, which is 27 over 27 over x squared. See here I have uh, ooh, x squared squared. Yeah, so I have substituted this expression for y into that. All right, I have a 27 there over y squared, but y is 27 or x squared. 27 or x squared squared. Okay, so this amounts to the system of equations. Y is 27 over x squared. And here, what do I have? Um, x is, now turning that upside down, I'll have x to the fourth. And attached to that, I'll have 1 over 27. And once again, I'll leave that first equation as is. y equals 27 over x squared. And I will... Um, We'll move all of these terms to the same side to give me that, uh, let's see, 1 over 27, or rather, I'll take uh, x to the third over 27 minus 1 times x is equal to 0. So see what I did? I uh, moved this to the other side, and then I factored out an x. <clears throat> and that second equation tells me that either x is equal to 0, which I do not care about for the sake of this physical interpretation of this math problem, uh, or x to the third of uh, minus 1 is 27. Let's see, 27. 27. You know, 27... Hmm. Let's see, 3 times 3 times 3. Yeah. Isn't it that um, the cube of 3 is, tw is 27? So 9 times 3 is 18 uh, plus 9 is 27. Yeah, okay. So uh, 
this second line says that either x is 0 or x is 3. So y, like, oh, okay, so if the second line says that x is equal to 0 or x is 3. And then this y is 27 over x squared will allow us to just figure out the solutions. All right, solution set. Okay, so there are a few things in the solution set. There's the thing in the solution set where x is 0. And if x is 0, then y is, oh, wait a minute, 1 over 0 squared. That's not going to work. Okay, so that is not a solution. There is no solution with a 0 in the first slot. Sorry about that. I'm going to have to draw over that in really dark, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, 3. And then uh, y is 27 over 3 squared. That's 3 to the third power over 3 squared is 3. Okay, cool. Now, um, that is the only critical point, and it stands to reason that this function is only going to have a maximum and not going to have a minimum. So we could go ahead and do this second derivative test, but we uh, could also just conclude here the... Um, dimensions of the box with volume 27 with maximal surface area all oh. Let's see, we need a uh, length, width, and height, so that is 3, 3, and then um, 27 over 3 times 3 would be the last one, that would be z in terms of x and y. Ah. 27 over 3 times 3 is 3, so actually the uh, the the box of fixed volume with the largest surface area uh, let's see of a given surface area uh, no sir uh, a given volume of largest surface area is a cube, it seems, right? So the dimensions are 3, 3, 3.